Hello. Uh, what does the new eco currency mean to Africa? Uh, the West Africa uh, uh, economic region is integrating uh, and they are changing from uh, using the CFA, the Frank Nations uh, plan to move reserves from France. Um, they are starting a regional central bank to manage the reserves and distribute uh, them to other partners in the world. And a brief um, history, and this is what one of uh, our uh, grandloquent uh, ambassador uh, of African Union to the U.S. has been articulating very uh, in most of, of, of occasions. Because the CFA uh, is a, a franc currency which was introduced in 1945 by then uh, France uh, to be used among its uh, colonies. So, and after independence, actually, uh, they continue to use the, uh, the, the franc. So, the Francophone nation is in West Africa. All of them, uh, one of the pacts of independence, uh, they, they were forced to use the, the franc. Now, recently, the president of Benin, uh, President Patrice Talon, uh, said that... Uh, the Francophone nations in West Africa want more control over the management of their currency and they plan to move some of the uh, reserves from France. So these uh, eight member nations of the West African Monetary Union unanimously agree on ending a decade-old model where the foreign exchange uh, accumulation is kept at the French Treasury. So. This one, uh, Talon said in, a, in an interview with the Radio France. So, what does this mean? And, and it's, it's something uh, we have to see that uh, we have the members of the uh, of the Central in Economic Region that includes um, uh, countries like Chad, Cameroon, Central African Republic. Congo, Brazzaville, and Gabon, and Equatorial Guinea. So all of those uh, were in, in the central economic uh, region. And then we have the members of the a, a union, uh, the West African Union, which includes Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, uh, Benin, Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal, and Guinea, Bissau. Now, they are coming together to make one uh, current. That is something which needs to be applauded. But then there are uh, some hurdles to achieve this. Uh, number one is the conditions or whether they will meet the criteria. Uh, all of them, uh, uh, th there is a strict criteria which has been set by the West African Monetary Institute that by the year 2020, they could have attained four primary criteria. First of it, a budget deficit of not more than 3%. So all of the countries should have a budget deficit not more than 3%. An average annual inflation rate of less than 10%. Then, they also have that the central bank financing of budget deficit should be no more than 10% of the previous year's tax revenue. And the gross external reserves would be at least three months of imports. Those are four primary criteria that all those countries have to attain by the year 2020. And then they have also to, to achieve other secondary uh, uh, criteria. First of all, each member state, uh, there is a prohibition of a new domestic default payment and the liquidation of existing ones. Tax seven should be equal to or greater than 20% of the GDP. So tax seven should be equal to or greater than 20% of the GDP. Wage bill to tax revenue equal to or less than 35%. Public investments to tax revenue equal to or greater than 20%. 
and there should be a stable real exchange rate and a positive real interest rate. So countries have to, fit, to meet those uh, uh, basic criteria before they can uh, join the single currency. Now, there is another big lion in the house, France. As you have heard maybe from another forum that France colonization uh, actually mm, they signed most of the countries, the Francophone countries signed a pact of continued colonization which had like 11 um, agreements which are binding even now that they continue to put their reserve it was one of the conditions that 85% uh, of the reserve of the Francophone countries have to be put in a French, France treasury. And they are doing it even now. And then, the condition of using the CFA, military, and all of these things. Now, what is going to happen? Uh, France is benefiting a lot of money from Africa, as it has been articulated. Like in March 202, former French President Jacques Chirac said, without Africa, France would slide down into the rank of a third world power. And the Chirac's uh, predecessor, Francois Mitterrand, already had progress, uh, talked about this in 1957, that without Africa, France would have no history in the 21st century. So you can see the tie between France and Africa. So France's economy relies on its Africa colonies. So will France really accept this is a lion in in the block? Will they allow uh, these countries in Africa to integrate and have their own common currency? And they live using the franc. Would that violate that uh, against uh, uh, France? Would they? And uh, and uh, from previously the, the two presidents, what they have said about France, would they agree? Uh, France still bleeds Africa of five hundred billion every year, and uh, such as cool coups when countries refuse to pay. That is what France. So. Actually, they hold ransom and bleed the 14 countries of these billions every year. And if you don't pay, they have been staging coups. This is something real. So, I would not be surprised that uh, Patrice Talon would be a great target because he's, he appears to be one of the great crusaders of this. And I'm not surprised that he, he might end up being a target. Let me give you back about history. Let's start from 1804. Haiti is Haiti is a, uh, an island where actually they had transported African slaves to work on the plantations. But at one time, the population of the of the slaves was much higher than in the colonizers because they were also settlers. So these people in 1804, the slaves revolted and actually gained in independence in 1804. So once they gained 1804, in 1825, France with warships at the ready demand of Haiti to compensate France for its loss of slaves and it is slave colony. They came back, they wanted to recapture back. In exchange for French recognition of Haiti as a sovereign republic, France demanded payment of 150 billion million francs. In addition to the payment, France required that Haiti discount it is exported goods to them by 50%. In 1838, France agreed to reduce the debt to 90 million francs to be paid over a period of 30 years to compensate former plantation owners who had lost their property. This is a modern equivalent of 21 billion was paid from Haiti to France for the next more than 30 years. They paid France 
uh, Haiti paid a poor country. And this is one of the reasons why uh, Haiti is so poor. So, this, this one, even many people have been protesting, petitioning, that actually France to repay back those billions of money they took from uh, uh, the, the, their colony. And this was started by King Charles the, the Fifth. So, that is how they siphon money from a poor country. Up to now, uh, Haiti is a very poor country, as we are speaking. So, Patrice Stern, our Benin, is on spot as a crusader for disengagement from, from France. Can he survive a, a French retaliation? Or rather, there is a political crisis in Benin right now. Actually, uh, there was a demonstration about the election, and uh, right now the former president, the Boni Ayayi, uh, he said to have gone to France for treatment. Who knows? They could be grooming because this is their history. So, would they allow these countries to integrate by 2020? We have to see. But the history tells us, and this is what happened. Seko Ture, in 1958, opted for immediate disengagement with France. And you know, he had said, Seko Ture, when he was given an option, either to sign a pact, or to have immediate independence, he chose for, he opted not to sign because the referendum of the people of Guinea decided that they wanted to engage with France. Actually, he said that, uh, Secretary said that we prefer freedom in poverty to opulence in slavery. What did the France do? They demolished everything. Schools, they're building nurseries, schools, public administration buildings were crumbled, cars, books, medicine, research instruments, tractors were crushed and sabotaged, horses, cows in the farms were killed, and food in wells were burned and poisoned. They even, the sewer system, they put concrete there. They destroyed everything, moved away from Guinea. Other countries seeing that, they were scared. So, they devastated the country and they moved. Even the railway, they had built, they took everything. The roads, they finished everything. That's, they scared the other people. Imagine poisoning even the food in the granary. You know, that's why sometimes I say, okay, the British had their own problems, but when they left the countries, they left in a, 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 a civilized manner. Imagine even when they left Ghana, they still left a lot of money into treasure in Ghana. They left everything, the systems intact. The French are a mean and cruel people. That's what they did. What did they do in Togo? Silvanos Olimbio was the first president of Togo. He also declined to sign the pact. But agreed to pay an annual debt to France for the so-called benefits Togo got from French colonization. It was the only condition for the French not to destroy the country before leaving. You know, they were scared what they did to Guinea. So he said, I'm not signing the pact. But he agreed to pay the colonial debt. And at that time, the colonial de debt was estimated to 40% of the GDP 1963 of Benin. The debt was so huge of building few schools and other things. Olympia decided to move away from the uh, CFA and they started to print Togo's own currency. He was assassinated three days later by a squad of soldiers financed by the French embassy. Olympia's dream to build an independent and self-sufficient and self-reliant country was thwarted because the French didn't like the idea. That is history 101, would they? And subsequently, they financed so many coups in Africa. On January 1st, 1966, Jean Bader Bokasa, an ex French foreign legionnaire, carried a coup against David Dako, the first president of the Central African Republic. 
Remember, Dako was one of the people who wanted Pan-Africanism. They did not want that. So they financed the overthrow. On January 3rd, 1966, Maurice Yamego, the first president of the Republic of Upper Volta, now called Burkina Faso, was a victim of a coup carried by Abu Bakr Samole, an ex French legionnaire who fought with French troops in Indonesia and Algeria against the country's independence. You can imagine. Even the latest, 1987, <coughs> Thomas Sankara, a revolutionary who wanted <coughs> independence of Burkina Faso, actually named the country Burkina Faso, the land of upright men. He had paid, he, he was working against over the reliance of foreign aid. What did they do? They used his friend, Blaus Cambrai, assassinated him and they killed him. They put him and he became a despot and ruled for 27 years. That's, that's France. In Mali, Modiva Keita, first president of Mali, declined to, 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 to join the CFV currency. In November 19, 1968, Keita was overthrown in a, in a coup. France instigated through uh, one of the army, the Lieutenant Mausa Traore. In October 26, 1972, Matthew Kreko, who was a security guard to President Hubert Maga, the first president of the Republic of Benin, carried a coup against the president after he attended the French military school from 1968 to 1970. You can imagine that's what he did if you tried to go against it. So, anyway, to cut the story short, with this monetary uh, gain and what can we do about this i would say all institutions people of africa they need to fight a case the francophone countries need to fight a case in the international center for settlement of investment disputes to get their money back and actually we need to empower african union uh, member states to fund this operation and reduce the reliance of donors. Right now, African Union, most of the of the funding of African Union is from uh, uh, from uh, uh, European Union. So, what could you do against it? And that is the reason why they had actually to to fire uh, Arakana Chiambore as the AU ambassador to. The U.S. because he was hammering French. He has actually excited. And I want this, what uh, Ambassador Giobore has started. I think Africa needed to cut this torch and the fight. And we need to petition. This is serious. This is support. They need to pay back this money uh, to the countries of Africa. So, if Africa Union can fund itself, can have its own army and sort of its own internal dispute. That's when we can get out of France. But so long as we are being funded by European Union, it's not going to work. So really we need to petition the UN, US, European Union to force France to resign this pact with African countries. I know there are some countries which have always been fighting. Even Italy have been saying that's wrong, what they are doing to Africa. So really, if we have to help this uh, uh, eco zone, uh, which needs to be supported, is a good gesture. And actually, we need to integrate and have African Union as a federal government. The mistake we made, whereby we had the Casablanca and the Monrovia group, we need to move away from that. Let all these countries unite and actually, one of the things is that French military needs to leave Africa. Let us support the ecozone is a good sign. And I hope everybody joins this to liberate Africa from colonialism.